Let us pray. O Lord, give me the tongue of the learned, that I may know what I ought to say. And if there be any word good for the use of edifying, give it, that thou mayest minister grace unto the hearers. Grant that I may speak boldly. I open my mouth wide, O Lord. Do thou fill it in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today is a fun mix of Sundays. In the liturgical calendar, this is the week after Pentecost, which means that it is every preacher's nightmare, Trinity Sunday. Today is also Father's Day, a day in which we uh, is devoted to the expression of our love for our fathers. And as I was sitting down and thinking about this, I said, these two standards against each other. We have the Heavenly Father in one side, the Earthly Father in the other. We have Jesus Christ, His Son. We have earthly children. We have the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, so mysterious to us that He often gets neglected. But He is the love of the Father and the Son. And on the other side, we have the earthly love of families. And just putting it like this lets us know why we need the Trinity. We need something to emulate that gives life. Father's Day is of, of late has begun to turn into Father's Day and Second Mother's Day, or Single Mother's Day, because fathers are becoming less and less a part of their children's lives. To the end that more and more people are thinking, why celebrate someone who isn't there? And thankfully it hasn't gotten to this level of disdain yet in the mind of the people. But this absentee dad is not just due to deadbeat dads, people who want nothing to do with their children. Nor is it due to the rampant divorce or breaking up of unwed parents. But it is also due to dads overworking and underengaging. This is also a cause of the downfall of, father, fa downfall of Father's Day. I saw a Facebook meme recently that puts this disparity between Father's Day and Mother's Day into perspective. It says, Mother's Day commercials, diamonds are on sale for $3,000. Father's Day commercials. Men's Target cargo shorts are on sale for $11. Now granted, who doesn't love new cargo shorts for $11? I like cargo shorts. I like not spending money on them. And sure, it could be that men aren't looking for jewelry or to be anything like that, so we give them a little something practical, if nothing else, because it lets us know that we're thinking of them and that we love them, but we don't really want to emote, so we say, here's some cats. I love you. That's enough. But in reality, that Facebook meme is dead on. We place our money where we value. Especially as a society, we value mothers more. But why? Because they show us more value. Especially now that life requires two incomes. Women work and come home. They help with the homework. They cook dinner. They play with the kids. They clean up after them. They read to the kids before bed. And the list goes on and on and on. Men come home from work. And then we just want to sit. We want to be left alone. I've had a rough day. We, I have no energy to play because I put it all in at work. Or maybe we just come home later because there's work and then there's things after work and then the kid, that way I can have a buffer between myself and, uh, and between work and kids so I can come home and, and give them something. We forget that society is no longer one person working and one person kid-minding and housekeeping. We forget that Ginger Rogers is doing everything Fred Astaire does, yet in heels and backwards. We forget that she, too, has had a hard day. She, too, is tired, but doesn't get to sit upon arriving at home. 
but societally, it is still okay and socially acceptable for men to do this, to come home and say, I've got nothing left, let me have a little bit, and then I will be able to. But this is why the commercials advertise the way they do. Mothers seemingly put in more work, so we value them more. Mothers show us more love, so we express more love to them. Now, I know this is not the case in all situations, but this is sadly the stereotype for a reason. This is a self-imposed stereotype. For the most part, men, the effort is in the work. I put in all my, my work, at, my effort at work. You know, I have to provide for my family. For women, the effort is for the home and for the work. Now, I'm guilty of this. Maybe you're not, but I know I am. Because this happens more and more, so, and it's, it's caught in my brain. But luckily for, for us, uh, luckily for me, if you get stuff out of it, awesome. Really, I'm preaching to myself. Like I said, this is also Trinity Sunday. The Trinity is the model by which all parents, but especially men, should measure themselves. The Father is utterly devoted to the Son, and the Son to the Father. Their love for each other is what binds them together. And this bond is so strong that it results in a third person, the Holy Spirit. And now to make sure that I'm not falling into, into heresy, I bring along St. Augustine who says, The Holy Spirit, according to the Holy Scriptures, is neither of the Father alone nor of the Son alone, but of both. And so, intimate, so it intimates to us a mutual love wherewith the Father and the Son reciprocally love one another. So the love between the two persons of the Trinity is such that a third person comes, all together in the unity of the Godhead from all eternity. And now here's where I have to break down my analogy because, I'm, because the way I'm using is not the way God is. Because the love that the, the type of love that the Father has for the Son does not result in a third person in us as it does in the Godhead. But there is a system that God has set up where this does happen. The love between a husband and a wife. This love, though initially romantic, is to be enlightened and enlivened by the sacrificial love. This love does indeed result in a third person through the coming together of husband and wife to become one flesh. The natural result of this unity is the birth of children. This love is also defined by sacrificial love, total devotion of the parents to the child and the child to the parents. This love shows what the mothers already know for the sacrifice of self and for the upbuilding of all. The mentality, I'm dead from work. I can't possibly do anything. But the problem is, is that the, our tiredness from work is our own fault. It's not, the, it's not the fault of the child. The child has done nothing. So it's not, I want to go home and, and, uh, not, and I want to rest, but it's I want to go home and I want to be with my child. I will sleep when sleep when it's time to sleep, and I will rest then. So now it's not sleep time, it's play time, or it's cooking time, or it's helping time, or it's cuddling time. All the things that are that a child needs in order to grow and to feel loved and to ultimately know that they are loved by their parents and by God. We show them this by demonstrating it to them by sacrificing ourselves completely for them. If we as fathers show this Trinitarian love to our children, maybe Father's Day becomes as honored a day as Mother's Day. If we as parents 
show this Trinitarian love to our spouses, then maybe we don't have as many marriages resulting in divorce. And if we show ourselves this Trinitarian love, then maybe we can forgive ourselves if we don't live up to this. And then we can dedicate ourselves to doing it better this time and every time in the future. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.